In section 7.2, you were asked to do problems 36 and 38 for board work problems. So for this video, I'm going to do problem 35. We were asked to rewrite this expression for sine x minus 6 cosine x in a, as a single sine function of this form. Since I see the argument of the sine function to be a sum of two angles, I pulled up the sum identity for sine. And then what I did is I multiplied a on the outside and I let my two angles be bx and c. And then I filled those in into our into the identity. So we want this function right here to equal some a sine bx plus c. So if four sine x minus six cosine x equals a sine bx plus c, and a sine bx cosine c plus a cosine bx sine c is equal to a sine of bx plus c, then these two things need to be equal to each other. If you notice, C is going to be a constant. It is going to help define our shift once we factor out the B. So if we wrote this as B times X plus C over B, this will be our shift, okay? Right now, it's easier to solve it as just plain C instead of dealing with C over B. So this is a constant, and so is sine c is a constant. So in this first term, we have a that is a constant, and c that, it is, a con that is a constant. And in the second term, we have a that is a constant, and sine c that is a constant. Now, in this case, the b is equal to 1. So this right here should be just x because b is equal to 1. And this should just be x because b is equal to 1. So we can write 4 sine of x. Let me get this stuff out of my way now. Minus 6 cosine of x is equal to a cosine c, our constant, times the sine of x plus a sine of c times the cosine of x. So that means the left-hand side of this equation has to equal the right-hand side of the equation. Now, on both sides of the equation, we have a term with sine in it. Sine of x, sine of x. So they're, their coefficients in front of them have to equal each other because there's no other sine x on either side of the equation to add to them or to subtract from them. We just need four to equal a cosine c, or else the two equations can't be equal to each other. So that means four has to equal a cosine c. Now, the same thing happens with the cosine. So we have one cosine function on the left-hand side and one cosine function on the right-hand side. So the coefficients in front of them have to equal each other. That means negative six has to equal a sine c. So negative six has to equal a sine c. Now we can evaluate um, each of these equations 
and solve them for their trig functions. So I'm going to divide each of these equations by a. So I get 4 over a is equal to the cosine of c. And I get negative 6 over a is equal to the sine of c. At this point, we draw our unit circle. Okay, and we have some point cosine c comma sine c. And this point, since a is going to be the hypotenuse for both of these, this is adjacent over hypotenuse, and this is opposite over hypotenuse. We could also say that it is y over r, and this one is equal to x over r. So we're going to look for the point on our circle. So this is no longer a unit circle. It's a circle of radius a. Okay, And on this circle, we're going to have the point um, 4, comma, negative 6. So cosine is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and sine is negative 6. Negative 6. And so we have this triangle right here. And I guess we could have said R. R. So this, we're going to say, is 4, comma, negative 6. Now our angle is in the fourth quadrant. And we know the opposite side is negative 6. And we know the adjacent side is 4. So the trig function, oh, and this is angle C. So the trig function that uses a an angle, C, and an opposite of negative 6 over adjacent of 4 is the tangent function. When we inverse tan both sides, we can say C is equal to the inverse tan of negative 6 over 4. In this case, because C is in the fourth quadrant, and the inverse tan function gives us values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The solution that comes from the inverse tan function is actually C. And I'm not going to approximate it. I'm just going to use the exact value. Now that we have C, the next thing we need to find is A. We have a triangle here. It's a right triangle with a leg of 4 and a leg of 6. So we know that 4 squared plus 6 squared is equal to a squared using the Pythagorean theorem. Or 16 plus 36 is equal to a squared. So here we have 52. 52 is equal to a squared, or a is equal to the square root of 52. Okay, so now we know both a and c, and we found b to begin with. So if we come back up here, we were asked to write 4 sine of x minus 6 cosine of x in terms of a sine bx plus c. We started off with b is equal to 1 because the b in both of these are equal to 1. So we know b is equal to 1. We found out a is equal to the square root of 52. And we found out that c was equal to the inverse tan of negative 6 over 4. So now we can say that this value right here, this equation right here is equal to the square root of 52 times
times the sine of x plus the inverse tan of negative 6 over 4. And that's, that's what we're done. We're done. We've written 4 sine x minus 6 cosine x as a single shifted sine function with an amplitude of the square root of 52. And if you took your calculator and you graphed this value and this value, or this function and this function, you, those graphs would lie right on top of each other. As long as you use the square root of 52 and the inverse tan of negative 6 over 4 or negative 3 over 2, whichever one, you can reduce the fraction, that's fine. But either way, if you enter in the exact values, then those two, those two curves should match exactly, and they'll be equal to each other.